Swift is a very safe language, by which I mean it works hard to ensure your code never fails in surprising ways. One of the most common ways that code fails is when it tries to use data that's bad or missing. For example, imagine a function like this one. Func get hater status returns a string. And it's going to return hate. That function doesn't accept any parameters and it returns a string hate. But what if today is a particularly sunny day and those haters don't feel like hating? What then? Well, maybe we want to return nothing. This hater is doing no hating today. Now, when it comes to a string, you might think an empty string is a great way to communicate nothing. And that might be true sometimes. But how about numbers? Is zero an empty number or minus one? Before you start trying to create imaginary rules for yourself, Swift has a solution, optionals. An optional value is one that might have a value or might not. Most people find optionals hard to understand, and that's okay. I'm going to try explaining them in a several different ways, so hopefully one will work. For now, imagine a survey where you ask someone, on a scale of one to five, how awesome is Taylor Swift? What would they answer if they'd never heard of her? One would be unfairly slating her, and five would be praising her when they had no idea who Taylor Swift was. The solution is optionals. I don't want to provide any number at all. When we used dash angle bracket string, it means this will definitely return a string, which means this function cannot return no value, and thus can be called safe in the knowledge that you'll always get a value back that you can use as a string. If you want to tell Swift this function might return a value, or it might not, we need to use a question mark like this, return string question mark. That question mark means optional string. Now in our case, we're still returning hate no matter what. But let's go ahead and modify that function further. If the weather's sunny, the haters have turned over a new leaf and have given up their life of hating. So we want to return no value. In Swift, this no value has a special name, which is nil. So I'll make get hater status take a parameter called weather, which is a string. And inside here, we're going to say, if weather is equal to sunny, then we will return nil, no hating today. Else we'll return hate and then end the condition. So that accepts one string parameter, which is the weather, and returns one string, the hating status. But that return value might be there or it might not. It could be nil. In this case, it means we might get a string we might get nil. Now for the important stuff. Swift wants your code to be really safe. And trying to use a nil value is a bad idea because it might crash your code. It might scrub your app logic or it might make your UI show the wrong thing. As a result, when you declare a value as being optional, Swift will make sure you handle it safely. Let's try it now. Var status is a string. Status equals get hater status for the weather being rainy. The first line creates a string variable, and the second line assigns it the value from get hater status. And today the weather is rainy, so those haters are hating for sure. That code won't run. Because we said that status is of type string, not optional string, that requires a value. But get hater status might not provide one because it returns an optional string. That is, we said there would definitely be a string in status, but get hater status might return nothing at all. Swift simply will not let you make this mistake, which is extremely helpful because it effectively stops dead a whole class of common bugs. To fix the problem, we need to make the status variable an optional string, or just remove the type annotation entirely and let Swift use type inference. The first option looks like this, var status string question mark, and the second like this, var status equals get hater status weather rainy. Regardless of which you choose, the value might be there or might not, and by default, Swift won't let you use it dangerously. As an example, imagine a function like this one, 
funk, take hater action, with the status being some sort of string. If status is equal to hate, we're going to uh, print out hating. Oops, end the function. That takes a string and prints a message depending on its content. This takes a string value and not an optional string value. You can't pass an optional in here. It wants a real string, which means we can't call it using the status variable from before. Swift has two solutions. Both are used, but one is definitely preferred over the other. The first solution is called optional unwrapping, and it's done inside a conditional statement using special syntax. It does two things at the same time. It checks whether an optional has a value, and if so, it unwraps that into a non-optional type and then runs your code block. So it would look like this. If let unwrapped status equals status, and if we're in here, then unwrapped status contains a non-optional string. Else, if we couldn't find a value inside status, it was nil, we can have, uh, in case you want, an else block, here you go. Beautiful. These if let statements check and unwrap in one succinct line of code, which makes them very common. Using this method, we can safely unwrap the return value of get hater status and be sure that we only call take hater action with a valid non-optional string. Here's the complete code. We're going to say if let hater status equals get hater status with the weather being rainy. Inside there, take hater status. Status is going to be hater status. Whoops, take hater action, my mistake. There we go. Mm, action. Boom. Okay, if you're still here, it means the earlier explanation either made no sense or you sort of understood, but could probably use some clarification. Optionals are used extensively in Swift, so you really do need to understand them. I'm gonna try explaining again in a different way, and hopefully that will help. First, let's delete lots of this code. Boom, get rid of all this stuff here. We're gonna say func year album released, is a name, string, returns an int. We'll say uh, if name is equal to Taylor Swift, we will return 2006. If the name is equal to fearless, we will return 2008 and so forth. I won't do all of them here. Otherwise, for all other albums, I will return zero, like that. This takes the name of a Taylor Swift album and returns the year it was released. But if we call it with a name like uh, the White Album, because we mix up Taylor Swift with the Beatles, an easy mistake to make, right? Then it returns zero because it's not one of Taylor's albums. But does zero really make sense here? Sure, if the album was released back in zero AD when Caesar Augustus was emperor of Rome, zero might make sense. But here it's just confusing. People need to know ahead of time that zero means not recognized. A much better idea is to rewrite that function so it either returns an integer when a year was found, or nil when nothing was found which is easy thanks to optionals. We're gonna say instead of an int, it returns an optional int, and send back nil if the album couldn't be found. So now that it returns nil, we need to unwrap the result using if let, because we need to check whether a value exists or not. Okay, if you're still here, it means you're really struggling with optionals. So I'm gonna have one last go at explaining them. Let's get rid of this code again. We're gonna have a new array of items. We'll say items equals uh, James, then John, then Sally. And if we want to write a function that looked in that array and told us the index of a particular name, we might write something like this. Func position of a string, string type in array, an array of strings, 
returns, and int. Inside there, we can count through 0 up to excluding array.count. If array i is equal to the string we're looking for, then we will return i. And then uh, end the condition, and end the loop, and end the function. But if we found none of those items, we can't return i. Instead, we will return 0. So that loops through all the items in the array, returning a position if it finds a match, otherwise returning 0. Now let's try running these four lines of code. Let James position equals position of James in items. Then let John position position equals position of John in items. Then let Sally position equals position of Sally in name, in items, sorry. And finally, let Bob position equals position of Bob in items. Now this is going to output 0, 1, 2, 0. The positions of James and Bob are the same, even though one exists and one doesn't. This is because I use 0 to mean not found. The easy fix might be to make minus 1 not found, but whether it's 0 or minus 1, you still have a problem because you have to remember that specific number means not found. The solution is optionals. Return an integer if you found the match or nil otherwise. In fact, this is exactly how the built-in approach for find an array works. Some array dot first index of some value. When you work with these, might be there, might not be values, Swift forces you to unwrap them before using them, thus acknowledging that there may not be a value. That's what if let syntax does. If the optional has a value, then unwrap it and use it. Otherwise, don't use it at all. You can't use a possibly empty value by accident because Swift won't let you. Swift lets you override its optional safety by using the exclamation mark character. If you know that the optional definitely has a value, you can force unwrap it by placing this exclamation mark after it. Please be careful though, if you try this out on a variable that does not have a value, your code will crash. To put together a working example, here's some foundation code. Funk year album released released, name is a string, returns an optional integer. Uh, if name is equal to Taylor Swift, then we will return 2006. Else, if name is equal to uh, Fearless, we will return 2008, and so on to the rest of her albums. Otherwise, return nil and end the function. We can then call that by saying via year is equal to year, Album released. Name is Taylor Swift. If year is equal to nil, print there was an error. Else, print it was released in in year. Like that. And end the condition. So that gets the year an album is released. If the album couldn't be found, year will be set to nil and an error message will be printed. Otherwise, the year will be printed. Or will it? Well, year album release returns an optional integer, and this code doesn't use if let to unwrap the optional. As a result, you can see it prints out it was released in optional 2006, probably not what we wanted. At this point in the code, we have already checked that we have a valid value, so it's a bit pointless to have another if let in there to safely unwrap the optional. So Swift provides a solution. We can go into this string interpolation and add an exclamation mark to year to force unwrap it. This means I am certain this contains a value, so please unwrap it immediately now. If I'm wrong, I'm happy for it to crash. 
You can also use exclamation marks to create implicitly unwrapped optionals, which is where some people really start to get confused. So please listen carefully. A regular variable must contain a value. For example, I could say var name string equals Paul. That must contain a string, even if the string is just empty, I open and close quotes. It cannot be nil. An optional variable might contain a string or it might not. It must be unwrapped before it's used. For example, var name to optional string equals Bob. The only way to find out if Bob's in there or not, or if it's empty, is to unwrap it. An implicitly unwrapped optional might contain a value or might not, but it does not need to be unwrapped before it's used. Swift won't check for you, so you need to be extra careful. For example, var name three is an op implicitly unwrapped optional equals Sophie. And now it's down to you to use it appropriately. It might contain a string like Sophie, or it might be nil. It's like a regular optional, but Swift lets you access that data directly without the unwrapping safety. If you try to do it, it means you know there's a value there. If you're wrong, your app will crash. The main times you're going to meet implicitly unwrapped optionals is when you're working with user interface elements in UIKit on iOS or AppKit on macOS. These need to be declared up front, but you can't use them until they've been created and Apple likes to create UI elements at the last possible moment to avoid any unnecessary work. Having to continually unwrap values you definitely know will be there is annoying, so these are made implicitly unwrapped. Don't worry if you find implicitly unwrapped optionals a bit hard to grasp, it'll become clear as you work with the language.